Vitamin D is one of the most popular supplements out there. People rave about it for all kinds of reasons, like boosting your immune system, improving your mood, helping with hormones, and supporting brain health. It gets recommended here on YouTube all the time by influencers and also many doctors. And even though a lot of those benefits are definitely real, there is a dark side to it that often gets pushed under the rug. That's why I made this video, because if you're using it long term or in very high doses, you need to understand what can go wrong if you're taking too much. We will talk about vitamin D's relationship with electrolytes, how it can imbalance things like magnesium, calcium and potassium, deplete vitamin A, and also lead to Th2 dominance in your immune system. To make things easier to follow, I divided the video into two parts. Part one, the short-term effects, so what can happen within a few days or weeks of taking high doses, and then part two, the long-term effects, so the more serious consequences that creep up over time. Now, we're not talking about the classic symptoms that you might read about on a supplement label or a health blog. I want to highlight the second order effects, so especially the ones that are rarely talked about online, but are absolutely critical to understand if you want to avoid long-term issues. To start off, let's talk about what actually counts as too much when it comes to vitamin D. The official recommended daily intake is about 600 IU per day for most adults. That number is usually considered too low, especially if you live in a northern climate or get very little sun. That's why doses of 1000 or 2000 IU are nothing unusual and most people wouldn't regard them as very high. 5000 IU per day is already on the higher end and anything above that is usually regarded as high. Of course, you also have super dosing protocols Let's say you need 10,000 IU or more per day, but that's a topic for a different video. The problem with defining an exact cutoff point for a vitamin D overdose is that this really depends on your current vitamin D status, your other nutrients, especially the ones needed for vitamin D metabolism, and your individual sensitivity and genetics. For example, I react extremely sensitive to it, and for me 2,000 IU would already be too much. A low dose of just 500 IU was enough to push my blood levels over 100, which is pretty crazy. But then again, I also make sure to have enough of the cofactors that we will talk about in this video that many people are low in and that get depleted when you take too much. What I'm trying to say is that most people would probably say that anything over 5000 IU per day is pushing the high intake territory and can increase your risk of an overdose. While this is generally true, there are definitely cases where much lower doses already lead to side effects, just as there are cases that do fine on much higher doses. Also keep in mind that some people argue that 10,000 IU per day is fine because that's about how much vitamin D your skin can produce from sun exposure in a few minutes. And yes, it is true that your body can make that in around 20 to 30 minutes, but here's the key difference. Your skin self-regulates. If you've already got enough vitamin D in circulation, your body naturally slows production. It has a built-in feedback system. With supplements, you're manually overriding that self-regulation, and if you keep doing it every day, your body has to scramble to compensate. And don't forget that sunlight vitamin D and supplemental vitamin D aren't exactly the same. I talk about this difference in much more detail in a different video that will be linked in the description. Great, with all of that being said, Let's start with part one, so the short-term effects. Let's look at what happens in the first few days or weeks of taking too much vitamin D. So the first thing will be that it burns through your magnesium. As you probably know, magnesium is required for vitamin D to be converted into its active form. It's needed in the liver and kidneys, and it plays a role in how vitamin D is transported and used in your body. So if you're low on magnesium, which a lot of people already are, High dose vitamin D can push you into full blown deficiency. Now, what does that look like? Well, you might get things like muscle cramps, tightness or spasms, heart palpitations, and anxiety or racing thoughts because magnesium is a calming mineral. Low magnesium is really an epidemic and many people don't realize that too much vitamin D will further drive it down. So if you're supplementing it, definitely also take it with magnesium. The next thing is that calcium levels will spike. Vitamin D increases the amount of calcium that your gut absorbs from food and also from supplements. That sounds great in theory, stronger bones, right? But the more calcium you absorb, the more likely you are to accumulate it in the wrong places if you're not also supporting the nutrients that help to manage it, like vitamin K2, magnesium, and potassium. So in the short term, this can cause symptoms like fatigue, 
loss of appetite, brain fog, mild swelling or puffiness, or headaches. These are early signs of hypercalcemia, so too much calcium in the blood and body. And again, people often misinterpret these signs as dehydration or just not sleeping well. The third thing we need to talk about is that your potassium will get depleted. So this is a lesser known issue. Vitamin D doesn't just deplete magnesium, it also lowers potassium. It's not entirely clear if this is a direct result of the vitamin D or the higher calcium intake, since calcium is a potassium antagonist. But since potassium is so important for heart function, nerve impulses, and fluid balance, a deficiency isn't something that you want when taking a lot of vitamin D, especially because potassium is also already low in so many people. Low potassium can lead to weak muscles, low energy, a regular heartbeat, and again, water retention. Also keep in mind that potassium works in tandem with sodium. So if you're already stressed, which raises sodium, and not eating enough potassium-rich foods, then this imbalance can hit fast. The fourth thing is that you actually start to feeling worse. So this one might surprise you. Many take vitamin D to feel better, more energized, less inflamed, and more focused, and it does often help with that. But what you sometimes see is that after a brief honeymoon period, some people hit a wall. They feel tired or tense and can't really figure out why. That's usually because their nutrient reserves are being drained and vitamin D is working against them instead of for them. Usually they will also notice that their blood vitamin D isn't improving much even though they're taking higher and higher doses. In such a case, the body is keeping vitamin D low to not lose more of the cofactors that you're deficient in. Now let's move on to what happens when you keep supplementing at high doses for months or maybe even years. So the long-term effects of overdosing. So here the first thing would be tissue calcification. Over time, if you don't have enough vitamin K2, magnesium, or healthy adrenal function, which helps regulate sodium and potassium, that excess calcium starts to deposit in soft tissues instead of your bones. This is called soft tissue calcification, and it's a huge problem. It can show up as stiff joints, hardening of arteries, higher blood pressure, kidney stones, and calcified ligaments or tendons. Once calcium builds up in places it doesn't belong, it's extremely hard to remove because you basically have to dissolve the calcium deposits in your body. I have a video on how to do that too if you're interested. It will also be linked in the description. Next, you will have ongoing magnesium and potassium depletion. Because calcium and magnesium are antagonists, as the calcium builds up, your magnesium will be further driven down. That means you have a calcium-magnesium imbalance, which we often see in tissue tests. And magnesium isn't just important for vitamin D, it also supports blood sugar regulation, sleep, mood, and muscle recovery. So if you're slowly draining it over time, then you can end up with things like insulin resistance, poor stress tolerance, restless legs, cravings, and insomnia. It's a really critical mineral, probably the most critical out there, so a deficiency will show up in many areas of your body. Just like in the case of magnesium, when cells are constantly being bombarded with high calcium levels, they also become less responsive to potassium, which can then lead to chronic symptoms like, again, low energy, a regular heartbeat, and blood pressure issues. The third long-term consequence might be a vitamin A deficiency. Vitamin D and vitamin A are both stored in the liver and they compete for that space. When you megadose one, the other often drops. People who don't consume much vitamin A, which is mostly found in animal foods such as butter or eggs, often have borderline low vitamin A to begin with, and high-dose vitamin D pushes that even lower. This can cause dry skin and brittle nails, frequent colds or infections, and even certain immune system imbalances. More on that in a second. This is one of the reasons I love cod liver oil so much, because it's a natural source of vitamin D, but also of vitamin A. It comes in a ratio of about 10 to 1 vitamin A to vitamin D, which seems to work best for most people. Okay, now the last thing I want to talk about is immune system dysregulation. So vitamin D is an immune system balancer, meaning it definitely helps keep autoimmune conditions under control. That being said, very high doses of vitamin D can shift the immune system towards a Th2 dominance. What you need to know is that your immune system has different branches that handle different jobs. Two of the main ones are called Th1 and Th2. Th1 cells are like the fighters that attack viruses and bacteria inside your cells. They're part of your immune system that's more aggressive and inflammatory. Th2 cells are more about making antibodies. 
They help fight things outside of your cells, so parasites, for example. A healthy immune system keeps Th1 and Th2 in balance, and vitamin D tends to promote Th2, which is why it's so helpful for autoimmune conditions, because they often come from a more aggressive and more inflammatory Th1 response. Vitamin A, on the other hand, tends to support Th1. So if you overemphasize vitamin D without looking at vitamin A, you can run the risk of creating a Th2 dominant immune system. Of course, this is highly individual. It doesn't have to happen, but it's just something that I wanted to highlight since you don't really see it discussed much online. And again, it highlights how important it is to keep vitamin D in balance with other nutrients. Great, that was pretty much it. Before we wrap up, I just wanted to make one thing clear. I didn't make this video to scare anyone away from vitamin D. It's an incredibly important nutrient, and for some people it can be life-changing, but only when it's used correctly. My goal was to simply shine a light on how one-sided protocols, especially those involving very high doses, can create hidden imbalances. These imbalances often don't show up right away, but build quietly over time and sometimes only surface months or even years later. That's why it's so important to understand the bigger picture and not just jump on trends. Vitamin D is everywhere now, and while I'm thankful that a lot of people are benefiting from it, I also feel like it's been declared the new super nutrient that supposedly cures everything as long as your dose is high enough. Please keep in mind that every nutrient in your body is connected, and when you push one too hard, others get thrown off. So instead of avoiding vitamin D, the real takeaway is to use it wisely and always with the right support. If you want to learn how to do that, check out the related videos that I linked in the description. They will be a good starting point. I will also link my recovery program that will be helpful if you're using vitamin D to recover from chronic fatigue or burnout. Again, everything will be linked in the description, so make sure to check that out.